Hello again, and welcome back to Illegally Sighted. This is Jesse, and I am back for uh, day four, part four of this uh, 2020 year, uh, 2022 year in review recap, whatever you want to call this shindig. Um, so far, we've talked about some of the uh, game highlights, some a lot of the retro first-person shooter stuff, and boy, howdy, after I even wrote those things down and recorded the video, there's a lot of them. Um, we talked about accessible games yesterday, and today we are going to talk about just some, you know, other things that happened this year, uh, events, some of the things, some of my year's highlights. Um, see, like some of my highlights, some of, you know, cool things that I've done or have acquired over this year. Um... Oh, I forgot to mention. Oh, I forgot. I should have put this in yesterday's video. I will briefly mention it here just because I'm not going to re-record that whole video again. I mainly mentioned um, accessible games, and there aren't many here. Um, but I, w I will mention um, a couple of accessible apps and things that I want to draw your guys' attention to. And for this video, before we get started, I'm going to queue up the original NES Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles game. We still got our Kawabunga collection going on here. And so, yeah, let's just watch some uh, original Ninja Turtles. Uh, this game was really, really hard, and I suck at this game. But it it's kind of neat. Um, so a couple accessible apps. Um, Envision AI has been out for a couple years now, a few years now, but it went free. If you remember, this used to be a subscription-based competitor to um, to Seeing AI, and especially if you were an Android user, you don't have Seeing AI, so you would have to use like Google Apps or something like Envision AI. But now, whether you're on Android or iOS, Envision AI is now free, so you can check that out. You can use it. Have another tool in your toolkit. Inclusive, I just did an, a video for that here within the last uh, couple few weeks here. This is kind of a new service, a new app. And um, yeah, it, it's it definitely go watch the video. It's kind of geared toward like to improving technology skills and uh, being ready for employment uh, as a blind person, uh, in, in employment readiness skills, technology skills. Um, working with things like JAWS, Google Google Suite, Microsoft Office, all those types of things. And it is tied into um, working with your VR agency. I know I did already get a comment from somebody who was asking about, hey, is this, um, can I just buy the courses myself? You know, I don't, I'm not involved with any VR agency right now. And to my knowledge, I don't know that there is. And if there are, I, I again, I am still in the process of, through my day job, figuring things out myself, how this stuff works. Actually, we do, we are going to have a meeting later this month. And we'll hopefully be able to learn a little bit more for our state. But um, my guess is, I mean, somebody's got to pay for it. Like, somebody has to pay for it. And if they are gearing this toward having a VR or... Uh, rehab agency pay for this stuff, <laughs> you know, it's probably not going to be cheap because they say, well, or, or, you know, just the whole general philosophy of think about assistive technology or anything disability related. If it's not geared toward the end user, like you and me, if they're, if they're expecting businesses and rehab agencies to buy this stuff, well, they got a bunch of money. We can, you know, charge a whole bunch of, for the, for whatever here. So, yeah, I don't know how affordable this is going to be, but it'll be interesting to, to learn more. And if I'm able to, I will maybe try and uh, give you guys an update, maybe during a channel update earlier next year or something. Uh, I will see what they say and see what I'm allowed to, you know, I don't, you know, there may be some things behind the scenes that I'm not really at liberty to discuss. I don't know what that's going to be like, but we'll see. But Clusive might be a thing that you might want to check out. Um, oh yeah, the Braille e-reader. 
that also came out. So if you are a Bard member, if you use Bard Mobile, the talking book program, and if you are a Braille reader, you want to have a 20 cell display, you can actually apply and get it for free as part of your Bard talking book membership. And they're starting to roll that out nationwide. Um, you have to ask your state's um, National Library Service branch, uh, wherever you get your Bard membership from, um, ask them and they will be able to help you out with that. Um, I recently did a review of it on the channel. So if you want to learn more about that, check it out um, there. Um, so the Steam mobile app, I it's not really an, uh, an, I mean, it's, it's gaming related, but I did want to bring it up here just because, um, they did, it's still not perfect. It's far from perfect, but, um, it still, I think can be useful both for shopping and even remotely installing games for people who especially have trouble and are not really able to use the, the steam desktop app. I did a video <clears throat> on um, Valve had done a pretty significant update and totally redid the interface for their Steam mobile application. So I would definitely look, look at if you're wanting to play games on the PC through Steam, give that video a watch because I also talk about how to remotely install games on the PC and how to... Um, you know, even how to launch things outside of the Steam desktop app. So I did want to briefly mention that. And I am I think this will be out by the time you see this video. Um, there's a new app called Menus for All. Menus, the number four, and then all. This is a neat little thing I learned about fairly recently. And it is a subscription base. You can do it monthly or yearly. But if you travel a lot or you just want to be able to know what's around you in your neighborhood, this is pretty cool because it is a app that is, uh, it, it, it will, they pull from a database somewhere and you can look up, uh, get accessible restaurant menus from like for your little local restaurants. Now it is going to be geared more toward urban and suburban places because like I said, I looked up restaurants from where I grew up in the middle of friggin' nowhere and naturally, it didn't find anything. Yes, there are restaurants there, but none of them are really hooked into the app. So, like, if you grew up in a rural, small town, you may not want, you may not be able to get anything. But if you live in, like, a fairly large city or uh, urban, suburban area, you will probably, oh, this level sucks. Um, you should be able to to find it. And I was exploring it and I did a video on it. So check it out. Um, menus for all. Yeah. It's really nice just to be, have a, to have a consistent accessible menu system, because again, you look up menus on websites and they usually, they just slap pictures of menus on and you got to try to OCR it if even that's possible. And it's just a mess. So I really like what they've done there. So those are a couple of apps that I wanted to highlight. I was going to do that for the last video, but I kind of, I didn't scroll down far enough in my little document here. I forgot. So we threw it at the beginning of this one. But day four, now we begin. Um, this is, again, just some of the stuff that happened to me or some of my yearly highlights of uh, 2022. The first thing, of course, that I have to mention, unfortunately, get the bad things out of the way first. I was all happy last year. I got my new gaming PC. And then, yeah, this pre-built HP turned out to be a freaking disaster. Um, around February, March, it really started crashing a lot. It would just reboot itself in the middle of doing nothing. I could be doing email. I could be sitting idle somewhere. And it would just regularly crash. And I think it was... I, I really, truly think that it was bad airflow, not enough cooling. And I have a feeling that the power supply in it, yes, it was, it was specced for the video card, but I think it really needed between the, the heat, the lack of cooling. And I think it was an underpowered power supply. 
those two things were the cause of it. I'm pretty sure because I've heard I re, since then I've heard of also people like there'll be power spikes because the video card will have to draw so much power for for a second or two to do some task. And if your power supply is ill-equipped to deal with that, uh, yeah, that will cause your computer to shut down or to restart. So that's probably what happened. Um, I literally, I had it, I had it go bad to the point where I saw parts were actually starting to fail on it. Like the lights were going out and this, the fans weren't starting anymore. I sent it in for repair, maybe thinking, okay, well, maybe I got a lemon. Um, they'll fix it and I'll give them one more shot. I got it back. I set it up the very next, or I, and I set it up. I was okay the first night, but literally I was doing something for work. The very next morning started restarting again. I said very many bad words. And I said, you know what? F this. I'm not dealing with this anymore. I've put far too much time and effort into this. I sent it back for repair. It came back in the same state. I tried even a few other things since. And I'm like, nope, I'm getting a refund. I sent the thing back, got a full refund, both for the computer and the warranty. And HP is no more. So I've been back in my old trusty home-built computer. I love this thing. Um, but it's just, like I said, it's just not equipped for some of the newer stuff here. So yeah, I lost out on some of my modern gaming, um, my, my modern gaming rigs. So I'm not able to play some new games as well on the PC as I used to. So I've been going to my consoles a little bit more lately. Um, so yeah, that got resolved. I almost got my computer upgraded this year. Um, but in my last channel update video, I did talk about that a bit. Um, basically it was, I, I the, the place where I got this computer built, they don't do that anymore. They only deal with pre built which sucks. So I'm currently working through micro center, but Nvidia is being stupid and greedy right now, as much as I love them and I love their cards. They're overpricing their 40, their 40 series cards. And their 30 series are not available anymore. And so I'm trying to figure out what to do with the video card. But I think I have the rest of my core system figured out and spec'd. So hopefully maybe they'll do like a 4070 early next year. Or AMD will come out with their cards this month and give them a little more competition. It sounds like nvidia's new cards aren't selling particularly well and in a way i'm kind of glad because people aren't buying they're not falling for their bullshit and they're not um paying sixteen hundred dollars they're not paying thirteen fourteen hundred dollars for freaking 4080 um that's all i'm going to say about that um i i talked a lot more about that in a previous video um again you know a highlight of mine is like again these are some highlights from the year my work on the Toby accessibility mod, um, getting to see like a couple of versions of that. We got the Toby deluxe pack. We got a Toby deluxe map pack two based on doom two. We had some fixes for navigation and radar and just really neat things being added. Uh, and he's still continuing to work on it. Speaking of the Toby mod, um, one of my highlights uh, was one of my streams earlier this year where I had Alan, Mr. Alan D1 in the chat. And um, yeah, he watched as I was uh, playing my way through, I believe it was episode two levels of the original Doom <clears throat> with, with, uh, without looking at the screen. So that was a really fun stream. Just, we had a lot of people in the chat. We were talking and Alan was there answering questions and, and getting, you know, kind of watching how I played the game to kind of get feedback so that he could improve it further. That was just a really fun stream. And hopefully he's open to doing it again. If I do a stream for the doom two levels, um, maybe I will try to do that here at some point too. But again, I've really taken a streaming hi hiatus. I'll talk about that here in a moment, but Definitely one of my favorite streams this year, in addition to the Stanley Parable stream. That was a really fun stream, too. Um, yes, my Reload Magazine 
article. Uh, I kickstarted the Reload magazine, and which is that first person retro first person shooter uh, magazine that spun off of E1M1. And I don't even remember how I got in. I don't even remember how it came to be. Um, but yeah, I uh, worked with their staff and I wrote an article, a feature article based on the Toby accessibility mod to highlight Doom's accessibility. Got some more information and a little bit of help and feedback from Mr. Alan D1, the creator of the mod. We submitted it and they loved it and we um, we got it in the uh, the sampler issue of uh, e of uh, Reload magazine. I have the digital copy, and whenever they ship the um, physical copies, I will definitely take a look at that because uh, I'm very like I said, I had to get a physical version. Normally, I don't get physical paper magazines or books because they're just not accessible. But come on, man, you when you get your when you have your own byline and you have your own magazine article uh, published in a magazine, yeah, you got to get the physical copy. You got to have a hard copy of that because it's just cool. So very proud of that. Um, oh, yeah. Um, ten years of YouTube. Ten year anniversary of Illegally Cited. As of, I believe it was in August, 10 years I've been doing this. Can you believe that? I sure can't. I still can't believe it's been over 10 years now. I started this in 2012 with a couple Minecraft videos, and then I started doing a couple of other mainstream games. About a year or two in, I finally figured out a couple ways to cover iOS games, record them. Um, and it just kind of picked up and took off ever since. So yeah, I mean, what I, when I started this thing, I did not know or even really think that I would be, uh, doing this 10 years. I didn't even know if the channel would, you know, get any subscribers, if it would last more than a year, if I would just peter out and get tired of doing it. Um, but like I said, I think that the channel right now is healthier than it's ever been. You know, I'm doing regular videos um, yeah, I mean, I'm really happy with the, the state of the channel. It's still small in the grand scheme of things, but that's fine. I'm, I'm happy where it is. And, uh, yeah, I mean, if it helps people, um, if it helps them, you know, I've had people literally tell me I've gotten emails, I've gotten, uh, messages on Twitter <clears throat> saying that, um, you know, I thought I had to give up on gaming and then I found your channel. And I realized that as a blind person or a visually impaired person that I could play games again, or, oh, I could use this type of technology again, or, you know, I could do things I didn't think I could do. And that helps that, that really means a lot. That is really helpful. Um, so like, I'm just, I'm glad that, um, I'm glad that my channel has been able to help people, entertain people. Um, you know, whatever, anything in between, but 10 years of illegally cited. Holy crap. I can't believe it either. I, I was just looking earlier this year. I'm like, wait a minute, really? 10, yeah, 10 years. I almost missed it even. I didn't even notice, but, um, yeah, I think like we're over 3,500 subscribers strong right now. And I know the, I, I've said this in a recent video where I know the cited games don't get near the attention. They're lucky if they break 30 views, you know, where your, you know, the iOS videos or the accessible, the blind game videos. Yeah, they do a lot better. They, they get, you know, hundreds or sometimes thousands of views. Um, but the the cited, the low vision spotlights, they don't do, do near as well. People just don't want to watch them. But I'm going to keep doing them because I like them. I, I want to, again, this channel is not just for blind people. It's for low vision uh, gamers as well. And there are a lot of people who do have some remaining vision. And if they're wondering about what types of games they may or, way, may, or may not be able to see well enough to play. I, you know, as a low vision gamer who enjoys a lot of mainstream games myself, 
I, uh, I want to, um, provide videos for those too. And since those are the games that I regularly play, uh, quite often, um, I figure I'll keep doing the spotlights because if it helps somebody, um, all the better. So yeah, 10 years of illegally cited. Good Lord. Um, right. So taking a break from VR. Yeah. You know, since 2015, 2016, I've done a lot of VR coverage. I've had, I, I own an Oculus Rift. I own an Oculus Quest and I've really loved a lot of what I've played in VR. I've played some great games. I've had some excellent um, educational experiences. Um, I've played with a few different apps that have been like just totally unique things that I would never even have thought of for a use of VR, like um, the phone booth or the phone of the wind or the, uh, what's the other one? Um, <clears throat> the Where Thoughts Go Prologue thing. Those are really just neat like social experiences with VR and they were fascinating. But I got to admit, I'm really kind of getting a little bit disenchanted with VR right now because, you know, again, these headsets have been out. The Rift has been out for five, seven years now, which is scary in itself to think that it's been around that long. Good God, man. Um, but there's nothing there's, there's, I, I, you know, following things like XR access and things, yeah, there are accessibility things happening in research labs and people are talking about it and theorizing and maybe prototyping a little bit, but nothing has, nothing has gone beyond the research lab. Oculus hasn't done anything for blind low vision accessibility. There's zilch, zero accessibility features for the, for either headset. Um, the app has regressed in accessibility. Excuse me a minute. I got to get a drink. The app has regressed in accessibility. Now, I guess they did. I guess they just did a recent update again to the app and maybe they might have partially fixed it again. But, you know, like I said, I, in the last, oh, Six to nine months, or I would say even the last year, year and a half, even like the year and a half ago, I probably slowed down. And then about a year ago, I brought up the time I got my new computer and I had unhooked my Rift from my desktop. I haven't hooked it back up again because I'm just like, you know what? As cool as VR is, I'm just, I'm not going to give any more money. I'm not going to buy another headset. I'm not going to buy the Oculus Pro. Now, if somebody want, if Oculus wants to send me one for free, fine, I'll take it and I'll be glad to try it. But with no, with no VR accessibility things happening on the consumer end for anybody, I'm just, I'm, I'm kind of done. Like I, like there's so many workarounds that I have to do just to get around the interface, to get around the headset, to get around the mobile app, and then getting into a game or, or an experience. I'm just like, I'm, I'm tired of it. Like I'm as, as cool as it is. I'm tired having to work three times, four times as hard to get half the experience out of an app or an interface. I'm just, I've got far too many other things I want to do on my plate. And, you know, I, like I said, I am all for VR. I enjoy it. I find it fascinating. And if somebody like if Sony or Oculus does add accessibility, if Apple maybe makes a standalone headset and they have accessibility in it, yeah, maybe I'll pop back in. But for now, like, is it, that's why you really haven't seen many, if any, VR videos. I don't know if I even have any recorded and queued up anymore. I got to double check, but that is why you have not seen very many VR accessible or VR videos this year is because I've kind of backed away from it. 
Now, I have still been very active in XR Access. I still fully believe that it could be made accessible, <clears throat> and I want to help make it accessible. But I, like I said, I'm just, I'm taking a break from it because it is just, it's kind of become exhausting to, to go through so many hoops to try to get it, get this stuff to work. And while we're on the topic of taking a break from things, um, I've also decided that I've kind of taken a hiatus from Twitch. I did stream, uh, I wouldn't say super consistently, but I did stream fairly regularly this early this year uh, until about summer, mid-summer or so. You know, in June, I took a couple, I, I, you know, I went on a vacation and then I did a couple streams after that, but then I'm like, you know, it was kind of nice not streaming for a little while. Just I have so much going on that um, I, yeah, I just kind of decided that, you know, I have so many other things, my day job, consulting, work, um, the channel, um, just, and then just time for myself. Um I decided that Twitch was going to be the thing that I would kind of step back from a little bit. And I thought I would do maybe a stream or two this fall, but I just, I've never really kind of gotten around to it. Maybe when I get my new rig, maybe I'll be more uh, inclined to do that more again, because I'll be able to play pretty much anything and everything again. But yeah, I've, like I said, just, I've been so, it's been ever, ever since I've got back from the vacation this summer, honestly, like my day job and like just consulting and other things that we'll talk about here shortly, it's been busy. Uh, it's been a very busy year for me. So yeah, I don't know. I, um, I said, I have not retired from it fully. Um, but it is not a high priority for me right now. Uh, I feel the YouTube channel is going extremely well. And so I want to keep that up and I want to do well by that. And if I can do streaming later at some point, I will. But that is, again, just an update. I've taken a break from Twitch and streaming for now. And that is a thing. Um... Oh yeah, the Cento Showdown. That was a cool highlight this year. Again, they're the all-blind and low-vision fighting game tournament, Mortal Kombat 11 tournament. That was really fun to watch. I knew quite a few people that were uh, in there. I didn't participate because I'm not near... I have not dedicated enough time to really do that. Yeah, not so much. Um, but it was really fun to watch. Congratulations to all the participants. And it was kind of cool because I was actually one of the winners. I was literally like the last prize that was drawn, I think, uh, after the finals there. And I did a little video for it. I, I won some uh, little collector um, coasters with a bunch of the Mortal Kombat characters. So, yeah, it was, it was really cool. Um, I enjoyed that and look forward to next year's tournament. The Aaron Spelker interviews. Now, I had one earlier this year. And it was just like late last year, early this year, it was just really fun. I find that I really enjoy um, podcast interviews, podcast discussions, panels. Um, and I did the interview with uh, Aaron Spelker on game accessibility. That was a lot of fun. You know, I did the vision forward thing. I think it was last fall. A um, couple other ones here and there. Theory of a Blind Man I've been on several times. Um, the Breakdown Walls podcast here and there, um, you know, so it's been fun, but, um, and then I, I, ha as, as I'm recording this, I haven't done it yet, but this coming week, I'm going to be doing a panel with a few other blind, uh, and low vision panel members with Aaron again. And yeah, we're going to be talking some more game accessibility again. And it's going to be a panel this time. And so maybe by, I don't know when he's going to release it, but possibly by the time you see this video, um, it may be out. If and, and if it isn't, it'll probably be out early next year. If you have not followed Aaron Spelker, 
do do yourself a favor and follow him on YouTube because he does these interviews and it could be an advocate or a consultant, another content creator. He's had a lot of developers on that have developed um, accessible games for blind players. And I think he does a really good job with his interviews. And uh, <clears throat> he definitely, I think, deserves more views and more subscribers than he has right now. So, yeah, I would I would definitely recommend checking him out. Aaron Spelker, A-A-R-O-N-S-P-E-L-K-E-R. Give him a look because it's cool. Um, my panel at the Game Accessibility Conference this fall. I got invited to be, I was on a virtual panel that we pre-recorded for the Game Accessibility Conference this past October. And we talked about not just, it, it wasn't just blind accessibility, it was just mobile game accessibility in general. We had a couple of people with mobility impairments. We had, you know, like, uh, like, um, cognitive or vision impairments. Uh, it was just a really interesting topic and like just gr good group of people where we got to talk about um, mobile game accessibility and some of the unique aspects and good and bad in that area. So definitely check that out if you have not done so. I do have a playlist, by the way, if you're interested in, you know, not just the stuff that I do for my channel, but like the interviews and panels and things and presentations that I've done. I do have a playlist now for, I can't even remember what it's called. It's like podcasts, presentations, and interviews maybe or something like that. Um, but you'll find it. Just go under playlists and look for that. And then you'll have some of that, um, those other, the other presentations that I've done over the past few years. Um... Again, a highlight of my year, just game and VR consulting, being part of XR Access, and just I've met just such a great group of people there. You know, it's been really fun. Um, the Microsoft Low Vision Advisory Board. It's we haven't we haven't met quite as much this year, but it's still really helpful. It's really cool. You know, talking about a lot of Microsoft accessibility, that kind of a thing. Um, and then just a lot of the the stuff that I can't really talk specifically about due to NDA, but I've had a fair few consulting, paid professional uh, consulting opportunities this year, and some of them, them, some of them have been like actual game consulting gigs. Some of them have been some panels for like an internal company. They're they're not publicly available panels, but they're for their for their, you know, their company and developers. Um, I've been on one-on-one -on -one interviews. I've done, you know, just a lot of different things. Like it's, it's been, you know, I've done, yeah, interviews, kind of play test type things, but you know, outside of my day, all this is outside of my day job, you know? Um, as I said on Twitter the other day, um, somebody had posted a thing. It's like, who, who, I forget how it was worded, but it was like, who would you mention or, you know, who do you want to shout out that helped you get to where you are? And I had mentioned specifically Ian Hamilton, because like for a lot of other people, Ian is the man. Like I, I, I attended that session from him at CSUN 2015 on game accessibility. And yeah, I was doing the YouTube channel for like three years at this point, but I was, um, after I met with him and got a few more ideas and really started to hone in on, uh, more specific game accessibility areas. And he gave me a few ideas and, you know, I, I got hooked up with a few companies and contacts and, things like Able Gamer Player Panels or the Microsoft, or what do they call it? Um, Accessibility User Research Collective, AURC. These are things that you guys can sign up for too, like the Able Gamer Player Panels or the uh, <clears throat> the Microsoft uh, Usability Research Collective. Um, and they will connect you with, uh, if you're really interested in doing this type of work, 
you know, they will periodically reach out to you. Maybe it'll be a survey. Maybe it'll be a interview. Maybe it'll be a something more. Maybe it'll be a consulting gig or whatever. Um, I'm involved with this other program now for the last couple of years, and I get emails from them periodically um, where when I originally got my PlayStation 5 for a study that I had done. Um, and I've done one or two more studies for them since. So, yeah, I mean, just like from 2015 on, it is just ramped up and up. And I would say from about 2018, 2019, 2019 for sure, because that's when I did my first um, game accessibility conference session. I was part of that panel in person. And then I did a some play tests, one in person, one remote. And then just from there, like I said, from 2020 on, we had a lot more remote experiences. And the last two, three years have just been, I don't know if I'd say fairly steady, but kind of has been. You know, once every month or two, and sometimes even more frequently. Um, yeah, I've just... I've done it, you know, I've been doing all these, uh, like consulting and presentations and experiences and, you know, the IGDA presentation that I did a couple of years, or a couple of years ago. Um, this really, I love what I do. I'm thankful that I get to do it. I'm thankful. Like I said, when I was a little kid, I always wanted to be like, oh man, I love video games. How can I be, when I grow up, I want to be in the video game industry somehow. And then I learned that I sucked at programming and I'm not really an artist, but it's like, I, I've somehow found, you know, it took me until my like mid thirties, a late thirties, but you know what? Uh, I have my day job where I focus on like the employment and all that area of blindness and helping people. And then outside of that, I do all this extra consulting work and working with game accessibility, VR accessibility, technology accessibility, apps. And I don't take this for granted. Like I said, I am thankful to be where I am. I love doing it. Um, and yes, it helps me. Uh, it personally helps me when I do it because, hey, yeah, then I get more accessible things. But like I said, just being able to know that what I'm doing is helping people um, you know, like I said, helping them be more independent, helping them be more, you know, social with their friends. Cause Hey, I can enjoy the games conversation. Now I can play games with them or I can talk games. I can whatever. Um, all that stuff that we talked about before. Uh, and yeah, so the playthrough here, we just finished the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles arcade game or not arcade, uh, the NES game, which I have never been able to do on my own. So you finally got to see the Technodrome and Shredder and yeah. Um, interesting. I wonder if it'll just loop or if it'll just like, it wants me to play it now. Um, we've got a couple more things left here or a few more things. So maybe, yeah, I don't think it's going to start. So let me, uh, let me back out here and I'll just start it over. Let me quit and I'll just go in again. It'll start and then I'll just have it start over. But, um, like I said, I've been just doing a lot more reflection, like reflecting this year and, you know, just, I'm happy. I'm so happy to be where I am. You know, we had the pandemic, the beginning of 2020 just sucked hard. Thought I found somebody ended up with a breakup, which really sucked. Um, the pandemic and all that. Um, you know, thankful to have the health that I have, thankful to have, um, again, my steady job, a great place to live, a job that I actually like, and then all this stuff outside of my day job, just this second career that I now have, um, for extra income and again, working in game accessibility, working with in video games professionally. Um, in addition to the, like, I'm doing this YouTube stuff for free. I just do it because it helps people. I found that I enjoy it and it's working for me. So why not? 
Um, but now that I'm actually doing things even more professionally in games, it's just, it's really, really cool. Um, yeah, I talked about VR accessibility, uh, Microsoft accessibility, that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I mean, I might have missed a few things here and there, but that's kind of some of the stuff that I, um, some of my highlights of the year, I mean, just getting to do so many of these different things, um, I've really enjoyed. And then for, we'll wrap up this video by, I just want to touch on, like, again, just a few cool little things that I've either done or found or collected this year. Um, you know, again, this being the year of TMNT, <laughs> I found that they actually have, and you can get it on Amazon for like 20, 25 bucks. A friend of mine actually sent me a text a while ago this year. And if you want the original TMNT cartoon, the old 1987 cartoon, you can get the entire 10 season box set series for like 20, 20 to 25 bucks on Amazon on DVD. So I'm like, yeah, it's cheesy, but you know what? I like a good old classic t Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So I grabbed that. Um, we got the Ghostbusters collectors pack the cool i did a video on that the um the uh what you call it the you had the go you had the ghost trap and you had like all three ghostbusters one and two and then the the um or was it afterlife um movie and no they didn't include the 2016 or yeah the 2016 ones because those were terrible <laughs> but um yeah, it was just, I mean, there's, there's just hours and I still haven't even finished it all, but there's hours and hours of extra footage for these movies and they're really neat. There's tons of stuff and I've watched a lot of it and there's still tons more left, but that is, if you like, if you're an, a Ghostbusters fan, that is definitely a collection that you might want to track down, although it might be a little hard to find at this point. Um... My Steam Deck. Um, yeah, I pre-ordered it a while ago, and I finally got it in, what was it, September-ish? And um, yeah, I'm really digging it, you know? I mean, I'm really annoyed <clears throat> that Valve has not added any accessibility features to it, but like a handheld PC in the form factor of a Nintendo Switch... It's pretty sweet and it's pretty darn capable. It can do a lot. It can play a lot of different games. So I did a hardware review for that. If you want to check that out, my Xbox Series S, literally within the last couple few weeks, as I'm recording this video, um, I, I picked it up. And by the time you see this, yeah, it'll only be a couple weeks old. But um, I've had it now for about a week. Actually, yeah, I think I've had it for just over a week as I'm recording this video. And yeah, it's, it's doesn't do the 4k. It's not, you know, the top of the line series X, but for my 1080p gaming and what I'm wanting to use it for, it's working pretty well. And I've already play, played some decent games on it. So, um, I, I literally just released a, uh, two videos, actually one hardware review, and then one covering the accessibility features of, the console so check those out if you are intrigued about getting a xbox console and yes there is a narrator on it so you can navigate the dashboard independently if you are blind um apple watch series 8 i did get one of those this year i didn't get a new phone uh, because the 13 pro max that i have is perfectly fine but I did upgrade from the Series 4 to the Series 8 Apple Watch. And, it, you know, it, it is another Apple Watch. There's not really a whole lot else to say about it. Um, but it is a solid watch. It is, uh, it definitely performs better, especially with voiceover enabled. Um, you know, I talk a little bit about the sensors and stuff in my review. Not going to go into a whole lot of detail, but uh, that was another kind of highlight purchase this year. Um... I don't know if I'll get it by the end of the year and by the time this video comes out or if it'll be early next year, but um, I should have an analog pocket coming to me soon. Um, I have not officially gotten the shipping notification yet. They, they said they locked in my order 
and the, it's processed and everything is ready, but I don't know why, but they're like, oh yeah, because they, they sent me an email recently. They're like, oh yeah, like the indicating like they're going to ship it right soon, but they have not done it yet. Um, this is that kind of, I talked about it in a recent video, but it's um, a handheld, like a really souped up Game Boy. You can play Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance games. And then there are adapters that you can buy separately if you want to play things like Game Gear or uh, some other portable system. So it's just a really high quality handheld device. I own a lot of Game Boy Advance games that I would love to play again. You can also get a dock for it, which I did, where you can hook it up to your TV and then just pair a controller to it. And then you have the best of both worlds. You can play your portable on the go, or you can play it hooked up to your television. So I do want to check that out. Um, hopefully it'll come soon, but Analog Pocket, looking forward to that. Uh, I talked about that already. Oh yes, in the recent book, again, I talked about this in the shooter video, but the I'm Too Young to Die book that covers the first 10 years of real first-person shooters. I'm in the middle of reading that now, and I'm really loving that. I've got the digital edition, and I've got this ginormous... <laughs> Uh, physical version of it because I had to buy that in order to get the PDF version. But uh, as it's a topic that I'm very, very much into, yes, I picked it up and uh, I am thoroughly enjoying it so far. So that was another cool kind of a gaming collector's highlight for this year. Um, ah, the classic Doom helmet. Yes, I think you had a, I think it was a Doom Eternal thing originally, um, but then you could buy it separately. And I'm like, you know, I don't really buy a lot of collectibles. Um, I did end up getting, you know, I have for like, and it's kind of dumb because it wasn't, it wasn't like a real helmet you could wear, but I do have the master chief helmet from like halo three back in the day. People called it the cat helmet. Um, that one was meh, but like, yeah, no, the, the doom guy helmet, the original doom guy helmet as a collector's piece. Again, I'm a sucker for doom. Um, if I could just find a replica of the super shotgun, I would totally get that and be happy. But, um, yeah, you know what? I, and I saw Mr. Allen D one had it in his videos. I'm like, that looks so cool. I got to get me one of those. And so I do have the, um, the doom guy helmet, um, collector collectible that you can, yes, you can actually wear it and put it on your head. Um, Oh, the other thing that I haven't talked about and that I haven't really covered, there was a plushie that I just had to get because it was hilarious. I can't even remember where I got it through. Um, you remember I covered on the Rare Replay collection, the Conker's Bad Fur Day. Yes, they actually made a plushie that you can put batteries in. And it is the great mighty who. <laughs> yes, it is a plushy great mighty poo. How dumb is that? But it's great. It's great. It's dumb, but I love it. Um yes, you have the great mighty poo. And I got another plushy that is sitting on my computer tower here. A game that I just cracked up over last year. Bug Snacks, The Bunger, 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 um, yes, that one, um, I got a stuff, or I got a plushy Bunger, I saw that, I'm like, you know what, I, the only thing that is disappointing is I wish that one had a battery thing too, or whatever, where it would, where it would just say that, because <clears throat> I, I can never not laugh when I hear them talk, because it's just so funny. And, um, yeah, Bunger, it's, it's pretty good. It's pretty funny, but I got one of those sitting on my tower. Yeah. Um, and then finally I did a video for it. I, some of them I've had for a couple of years, but I finally released a video for them. I kind of, I have kind of my eighties trilogy, as I call it, my eighties trilogy of cool cars. I've got my DeLorean from back to the future. I've got my Ecto-1 from Ghostbusters, and I've got my Kit Night 2000 from Knight Rider. And those are sitting on 
one of my little shelf thingies that I have over here. And so, yeah, I've got my 80, 80s trilogy of just really cool cars. And then, of course, it was last year, but I have to throw in there a separate video. But I, I have to mention, if you have not watched the video that I did for the um, Robeson Optimus Prime, that is a cool freaking robot. So I have the trilogy of cars, and then I have the best 80s toy robot whatsoever. A self-transforming. It transforms by itself. It can do poses. It talks in Optimus's real voice, Peter Cullen. Um, it pairs with your phone. You give it voice commands. It is badass. So the Robus and Optimus Prime, if you have not, if you are new to the channel and you're watching this and you haven't seen that video, ooh, just go check out the Geek Loot Spotlight playlist because, and look for that Robeson video because, yeah, these other three cars are cool, but they're just like, you know, they're more like die cast model kind of cars. But this, uh, this Robus and Optimus Prime is just cool. So those are, again, just some of my highlights for the year. Again, you know, it's been a very busy year, a very productive year, a very strange year in some ways. Lots of games came out, a lot of um, work opportunities, a lot of just meeting cool people, podcasts, presentations, interview opportunities, any number of different things. But um, that is just a few highlights, you know, things I've kind of gotten to do, acquired, channel, streams, stuff. Um, anyway, that is where we're going to wrap it up here. Let me just double check to make sure we are where I think I am, and I think that I'm ready for day five, the final video. Let's see. Yep. Okay, so we're good. So yeah, this will be the wrap up for day four. One more video to go, guys, and t this next time we're going to be take we're going to just do kind of a sneak peek at 20, uh, 2023 and maybe a few highlights, hopefully, of what's to come for next year. So we're going to wrap it up here. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Give it a like if you did. Follow me on Twitter at BGFH79, twitch.tv slash illegally cited illegallycited.com and right here on YouTube. Until next time, I will chat with everyone again later for part five.